Welcome back to Size Boys Review. Today, we will review the newest Izulu sample tools from God Hand. To make my review more effective and accurate, I reached out to a friend and master of mine in the Canadian Gunpla and Modeling community to help me out. Before we get to him, let us first look at the sample tool from God Hand. These are the Kizulu blades from God Hand. For now, they come in two sizes. By reading the code, I suspect there might be another size in the middle of the tube. The red Kizulu A has a low grit size, while the blue Kizulu C has has higher. Both files have similar packaging style. Text on the right says you can send in any direction, while the text on the left means make it with the feel of your fingertips. The bottom left shows a picture of its application. So here is Kizulu A for the low grit size. The size of the file is about my index finger. As you can see, it's metal. The back of Kizulu A has picture instructions on how you can hold it. And the top shows that the purpose of Kizulu A is to send down the plastic fast. The Kizulu C file is smaller in size in comparison. The purpose of Kizulu C is to refine the surface send it down by the A file. And it's also good at reshaping small surfaces. Once again, there are also instructions on some common ways to hold it. Now, let's test them out on my current Nightingale build. I started with Kizulu C on the edge of the Nightingale feet to create a flat C surface at the angle. I recommend sanding in one direction so the sand marks will not go everywhere and it's easier to clean up. Here is another demonstration. Using the Kizulu A file, I made the front surface of the feet flat. As you can see, Kizuru A is fast at sanding down the plastic, but it leaves some marks on the surface. Then, I cleaned up the surface with Kizuru C. Overall, I think both files work very well. The files eat into the plastic, so it is a lot faster with the sanding. Usually, the files and metal sanding sticks have this one direction pattern. However, the Kizulu blade has a diamond pattern that allows you to sand in every direction. I cleaned the files with a toothbrush, but the file had a rough grip. As you can see, there are still leftover dust from the plastic. Hopefully, my special guest will teach us a thing or two about cleaning this tool. Now, I will pass the tools to a special guest for a master level review. Let us welcome Simon Lam. Simon is a well-known builder in the Canadian community, being the award winner for multiple international plastic modeler society events and the winner of the first Gunpla Builders World Cup in Canada. Last year, he scored second in the Gunpla Builders Cup in the Canadian region. He got back into Gunpla in 2017 after a 20-year hiatus and now he's known on the internet for his spectacular hand painting styles and here are some of his works. By the way, shameless plug, I placed third in Canada for last year's Gunpla Builders Cup as well. Stay tuned for another trophy unboxing. Now, I will stop talking and let's find out his impression for this tool. I'm sure every one of us will learn a thing or two from him. Hi there, this is Simon Lamb. Uh... For those who don't know me, I am a model builder. I build just about anything from the military to sci-fi, mostly Gundams. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time recently learning how to paint figures and miniatures as well. Uh, I've been asked by a friend to do a product review to something that just recently released on the market. Uh, it's some really interesting looking metal file made by God Hand. Uh, my goal here is to give you my honest opinion of what I found that I like or I don't like about this product. Uh, speaking strictly from uh, a user and builder perspective, and I will also try to give you some kind of comparison between a uh, similar product that I have been using so that you have some kind of reference point. Um, I believe that's enough introduction, so let's get right into it, shall we? Okay, so we are at the bench. Uh, so let's take a look at the main attraction. So this is your typical uh, gut hand packaging that looks really nice. Uh, these are the actual files itself. Now they comes in two different formats. One is the medium grid, the other one is the rough one. Uh, by first impression, they are a lot smaller than I expected, uh, but they do weight uh, quite a lot. So it uh, seems like it's a solid piece of metal that that part I really appreciate. Uh, but before we get into a, a bit more details on these guys, uh, we're going to quickly go over some basic when it comes to sanding as well. Uh, when it comes to sanding, uh, most people will 
automatically think about sandpaper cut the product like this one. Uh, this is a really good, I do use them a lot usually to finish off the sanding process. Uh, typically, I do not stock my sanding with them. The uh, reason being uh, they're quite small compared to the other tools that I have. Um, the, reason, the problem with being slow uh, is uh, pretty simple. So, when you do sand, what you're really trying to do is try to be parallel to the surface you want at the end of the day. So, you try to be consistent going in the same directions every time you sand. Um, if it's going to take you 5 to 10 minutes, somewhere along the line, you're going to end up, instead of going parallel, you're going to end up going along the curve somewhere. Uh, so what you end up doing, you'll be rounding off areas that you don't really want to. Uh, so ideally, if you can, you want to try to take down the material as quickly, as efficiently as you can to get to the flush surface, then you can finish off with the sandpaper type product. So when it comes to speed, uh, typically we're going to have to look into metal type of products. So for metal type of product, uh, this is the most typical one is a metal file. Uh, if you pay attention to the groups on the file, this one, uh, you can see the cutting edges actually parallel to each other. What that is saying is that this is a single directional file. Uh, so when you actually want to file with these, you have, you have to go using a single direction, okay, in order to get a cutting done. If you go sideways, then nothing's going to happen. For this type of file to be efficient, then you have to take advantage of the entire length of the file that you want to be able to use the entire length for you to be efficient. Now, unfortunately, a lot of times uh, you might not have the space for you to be able to do this. So then you're pretty limited uh, sometimes. So what happened is there is a different type of file called a multi-directional file. Uh, if you look at the grids, uh, multi-directional files typically are crisscross each other, so you will see uh, the little squares in between. Uh, so what that does is that actually you can buff in any direction that you want instead of just going on a single direction. Uh, it seems better, but the downside is that the cutting power is actually less efficient than a single directional file. Uh, so you're trading in a bit of that cutting power for that flexibility that you can go in multiple directions. Um, there's also a third type of metal file called diamond dust file. Now diamond dust file really is diamond powder that's embedded onto the metal itself to create a sandpaper-like surface for you to buff on. Now because of that, this is actually no different than a sandpaper type of powder, so we're not going to go into details on this guy. So. Um, somebody might ask, so what exactly are the difference between uh, a sandpaper and a metal product? So I'm going to introduce, uh, this is the benchmark. Uh, this is a metal file that I have been using made by uh, Suji Bully, And this is by far the most efficient uh, metal file that I have come to encounter uh, for the years I've been building models. Um, if you flip it upside down, you can see that this is uh, the cutting edge is also it's all parallel to each other it's on an angle so that tells you this is a single directional file now to be able to compare the speed uh, let's take a uh, 400 grid now this is your typical styrene pre-mm uh, let's just take one corner for example so we'll give it a little roughing for about five to ten seconds so you can see that the corner is fairly baffled in 5 to 10 seconds. So if we're going to use this type of product and do the same thing here. So 5 seconds later, you can see the corner is gone. So that tells you the, the difference in speed when you're using a metal file uh, versus a sandpaper file. So now let's take let's take another look at the guard hand metal file itself. Uh, so we're gonna try uh, the rough one. Now I should flip it upside down, like clean up a little bit more. Uh, you can see the grids are crisscross each other, so that tells me this is a multi-directional file. Uh, I can send it in any direction I want. Uh, if I want to compare it, look at the size difference there. So this is actually a lot smaller 
than the benchmark product. So when it comes to speed, let's do a little test. So this is the piece that we just did using the benchmark. Uh, let's just do another corner with this, doing the same thing. So five seconds later, again, you will see the corner is gone. So that tells me this is a lot faster than any sandpaper product that I have. Uh, but if I compare it to my benchmark, I will still see, in this case, I think my benchmark is still slightly faster. Not by much, but it is uh, a little bit faster. But uh, what I was mentioning before, this what we're using is a multi-directional product. So what happened now is I actually have the benefit of going in different directions and this is much smaller uh, than my benchmark so that I can get into tighter space. So I can see this is actually more versatile than my benchmark uh, metal file. And the second thing that we're going to look at is the finishing surface uh, from sanding with these. So let's do it here. this now I can clearly see uh, the marking that caused by the cutting edge here um, it's not perfectly smooth but at the same time it's not really something of concern all I really have to do is just to take a 400 grid and basically just smooth it out a little bit and there you go you have a perfectly smooth surface right there so now that we've seen uh, the files in action, so exactly how would I rate uh, these files? Uh, if you're talking about cutting power efficiency itself, uh, this is clearly uh, a lot better than your typical metal files. At the same time, you can still see the difference between the benchmark and them. So they are, yes, they are slower, but at the same time, if you consider the ease of use um, and also the fact that these benchmarks are fast, but there, it also comes with a lot of restrictions uh, because this is a single directional push file and it's basically bigger. So I can see there's, uh, there are occasions where space might be limited that I can only be using this but not my benchmark. Uh, so when it comes to these guys, I believe I would say they're a lot more versatile uh, at a cost of a little bit decrease on your cutting power, the efficiency that I'm willing to trade in. Uh, so overall speaking, I would prefer this one than my benchmark. Uh, so this would probably become my go-to file from now on. At the same time, are these files perfect? Uh, unfortunately, I would say no. Uh, as I mentioned before, one of the benefits of these files is the fact that they are small. But because they are small, when I'm holding the file, I would prefer if they actually comes in a handle like the other one. That would have made this a lot better uh, than as it is right now. Uh, on top of that, when it comes to the finishing service that we tapped earlier, I would wish the finishing service a little bit smoother than what it is. Uh, but at the same time, is it really a big problem? No. Because uh, all you really need to do is just sand it down a little bit, that will be fine. Uh, so I'm willing to trade in uh, the disadvantage. Uh, so overall, I will still pick this one over the benchmark product. So one thing also worth to mention is the maintainers for this type of metal product. Um, I believe this one is made out of iron, so what that means is that this is subject to rusting. Uh, generally, that's not a good thing for this type of product. Uh, so try not to get that in touch with water as much as you can. Uh, when it comes to maintenance or like cleaning, all you need to do is just get a, a little bit of like a synthetic brush and just brush it off like that. Try not to use a metal wire brush because uh, in general when you put that into a metal, the metal is just going to dull the blade and that's not a good thing for them. Um, if you see that the plastic got stuck in between grids and you really want to get rid of them, what you can try is to use a little bit of paint thinner. Uh, so what you're really doing is melting off the plastic and then you have to clean up as quickly as you can uh, so that it dry it off and it doesn't stop the rusting. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, all I wanted to say about this. 
I hope you enjoyed my video, I hope you enjoyed my review, and I hope to see you guys next time with something interesting on my way again. Thank you. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed Simon's review. To find out more about his work, you can check out his Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I will leave them in the description. For some final recommendations, I suggest this tool for heavy customizers. Super handy. I don't recommend buying this tool if you have a tool that does the same already. However, if you're looking for replacements, upgrades, or starting to customizing Gunpla, this is a great set to have. Hobby Link Japan is currently selling them each for about 27 US dollars or 32 Canadian dollars shipping excluded when these arrive at north america the price might increase a little due to importing and shipping for more reference here are some pictures of this tool set how do you guys feel about the new kizulu god hand file set will we buy it let me know in the comments that is all from me special thanks to plamod for providing this tool for review plamod is the official bandai distributor in canada by from canadian hobby businesses to give them some support link in descriptions if you enjoyed this review please like and subscribe to my channel for some support if you have any suggestions or any kit you want to see let me know in the comments you can follow my instagram and twitter for almost daily updates if you want to show some extra care my patreon is up and running i will be sharing some patreon exclusive content over there thank you for watching scythe here i will see you next time